Come on, church, say hallelujah. hallelujah. No, no, no. Come on, church, say hallelujah. hallelujah. Isn't God good? Well, what a miracle, too. Bishop Vashti Murphy McKenzie, presiding prelate and convener of the 10th Episcopal District of the 2021st Spring Convocation. And to Supervisor Dr. Stan, the man McKenzie, our superstar friend for life. To our international president and CEO of Women's Missionary Society, Dr. Deborah Taylor King, to the president of Paul Quinn College, Dr. Michael Sorrell, to the president of the Presiding Elders Council, Reverend Dr. W.R. Bryant, to the district presidents of WMS and Lay, President Jerry Sorrell and President Jerry Earl and President Dr. Roderick Moore. To our stewardesses and all of our 10th district auxiliaries, clergy, lay, WMS, YPD. To all visitors and guests, to include our virtual guests, I greet you in the name of our risen Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. As I stand before you this behind this historic desk, on this historic, and you do know this is a miracle. And I need you to know that there, uh, is there anybody here this morning that want to praise God for a miracle? No, 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 y'all don't get it. This is a miracle. Sisters and brothers in Christ, this morning, before we sing any songs or say any prayers, let's open our mouths and shout, thank you, Lord, for bringing the 10th District a mighty long ways. Is there a witness in the house that God is good? Is there anybody here that want to thank God for being such a wonderful God? Praise God from whom all blessings flow. to worship, oh, give thanks to God for all the goodness we are shown. God's steadfast love endures forever. We present ourselves, our souls and bodies as a reasonable sacrifice. God's called us from our lofty ambitions and our occupations with marvels and matters beyond our scope. We have come to witness that these are servants of Christ entrusted with the secret things of God.
the opening hymn, How Great the Wisdom. Hold on, hold on. Go back to verse 1. Amen. Let's do that again. Amen. Give us the intro. Let's sing. Fourth verse. Watch me. Very good, very good. Look at your neighbor and say, you did a good job this morning. Amen. You may be seated. Let us pray. O oh Lord our God, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. We come before your holy throne of grace one more time, Lord. One more time as a body of believers believing in your power and your presence. God, we want to invite you to just stay a little while longer with us this morning. We want to thank you, Lord. We, we just want to lift up undignified praise to you this morning. Oh God, you kept us, and you brought us a mighty long way. And for that, we say thank you, Lord. We've been through the storm and rain, oh God, but you kept us. And you brought us from a mighty long way. You kept us from the pestilence, oh God. You kept us. And you brought us from a mighty long way. Now, God, we come this morning and we come to praise you. We come to worship you this morning. We come to give you thanks, oh God. We thank you for allowing us to come together this morning in person 
We thank you for the virtual worshipers as well, oh God. But Lord, we say thank you, thank you for our awesome leader this morning. We thank you for Bishop Vestai Murphy McKenzie this morning. We thank you for her leadership. We thank you for Dr. Stan this morning. Lord, but we come thanking you because you are God and there is none other like you. And so we worship you this morning. We lift your holy and righteous name. It's in the matchless name of Jesus we pray. We thank you, God, for your power and your presence. And all of God's children said amen. amen. <coughs> Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh. next More than 140 years ago in the basement of Metropolitan African Methodist Episcopal Church in Austin, Texas, Bishop Brown and a group of preachers organized what is now known as Paul Quinn College. Yeah. Now, from Austin to Waco to now the campus here in Dallas, Texas, more than 500 students are matriculating. And two weeks ago, 156 students crossed this stage. The Lord is good. And he has been good to us. It is the Lord's doing. And we are glad. And because of you, my brothers and sisters, the members of the 10th Episcopal District, when we did our vision casting in 2016, uh, you agreed with the Lord and said, let us renovate this space. Let's figure out how we can get into it so students can worship, preachers can Amen. preach, Amen. and as a state district, we'll have a space large enough to gather without having to gather in a hotel. Y'all missed it, but that's all right. You'll catch it on the rebound. Amen. You helped us to do that, along with 10th Future Inc., and those of you who are members of the board, on 10th Future Inc., just raise your hand so we can praise God for you. Come on, give them a hand. And through the annual golf tournament since 2013, more than a half a million dollars has been returned to local congregations for a variety of projects, including helping to renovate this chapel. Others stepped up to the plate and pledged funds that we may refurbish the seats that you're sitting in now. Aren't they beautiful? Plush, velvet, they look good and feel good to sit in. And on the back of the chairs should be gold plates, not on all of them, but on some. Those of you who have completed your pledge, there are plates now in the back of the seat that bears your name. Yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Those of you who completed your pledge, you can go find it after the service, but right now we're gonna pray. <laughs> Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for compassionate hearts and generous spirits who sacrificed out of their plenty and out of their need that the seeds the seats would be refurbished in such a way to honor you and add to the aesthetic beauty of this sanctuary. Thank you, God, for people who believed enough to do. And we thank God for every construction worker 
every window that was sealed, the carpentry that took place, the caulking, the refurbishing of the lights, the electric electricity, the brand new tons of HVAC that sit on the roof now so we can be cool in the summertime and warm in the wintertime. We thank you for every electrician, every plumber, for the refurbished restrooms in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh God, somebody had faith to believe and you honored that faith and so we are here today. So God bless every seat that whoever sits in it will feel the blessing of the Lord, that whoever sits in the seats in this sanctuary will feel your love and your presence, that whoever sits in the seat will have their prayers prayed and answered, that whoever sits in the seat will know that they are loved by you and feel the power of the Holy Ghost. Thank you, God, for bringing visions to fruition. For we take no credit for ourselves because we know it is your doing. And we are glad. Now we pray our prayer of blessings and consecration. In Jesus' name, together we say amen. amen. And together we say amen again. We ask the Board of Examiners now to come and present the candidates for ordination. I'm trying not to be too excited, but I is excited. Amen. Let me see the hands of those who ever stayed up all night long waiting for God to work it out. Yep, stayed up. You prayed your prayer, but you're still up all night long waiting for God to work it out. And then when God works it out, you just get excited in your spirit. Amen. I'm holding it down. Y'all praying for your bishop. Bishop McKenzie, our friend, present to you this person to be ordained deacon. Be sure that the persons whom you present are proper and fit by thy godly conversation to carry out their ministry duly to the honor of God and the uplifting of the church. I have inquired concerning him and also examined him and think him to be so. Each candidate has been voted upon in their specific annual conferences. They have satisfied all of the requirements of the Board of Examiners, and the annual conference has voted that they be elected and ordained. Amen? And they are? Mark Anthony Peters. Please come forward. Members of the conference, if there be any of you who know any impediment or crime in any of these persons presented to be ordained deacon, for which he ought not to be admitted to that office, to let them come now in the name of God and show what the crime or impediment is. Hearing none, you may step to the side, please. I present to you these persons to be ordained elders. Be sure that the persons whom you present are proper and fit by their godly conversation to carry out their ministry duly to the honor of God and the uplifting of the church. I have inquired concerning them and also examined them, and I think them so to be. And they are? Cynthia Lynn Rogers. Please come forward. Tommy Lee Helper. Valerie Anise Wright. Lamel Taylor. Itinerary. My brothers and sisters, the persons before you, we propose God willing this day to ordain local elders and itinerant elder 
for after due examination we find not to the contrary, but that these persons are lawfully called to this office and ministry, and that they are the persons proper for the same. But if any of you gathered here today know any reason why these persons presented to be ordained elders, which will prevent them from being or admitted to this office, come now in the name of God and state the reason. Hearing none. Take my life and let it be. Take my hand. That the candidate for diaconate ordination, if you will come now and stand with this as we go through the ritual for both deacons and elders, I respectfully ask that you please physically distance yourself and you will not kneel to the altar until it is time for ordination. Let's slide down a little bit more. It's all right. We Almighty God, who by your divine providence has appointed diverse orders of ministers of your church and did inspire your apostles to choose to the order of deacons, the first martyr, St. Stephen, with others, mercifully behold these, your servants, now called to the like office and administration, replenish them so with the truth of your doctrine and adorn them with the innocency of life that by both word and good example, they may faithfully serve you in this office to the glory of your holy name and the building up of your church through the merits of our Savior Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, giver of all good things, who by your Holy Spirit has appointed diverse orders of ministers in your church, mercifully look on these your servants, now called to the office of elder, and replenish them with the innocency of life that they both, by both word and good example, they may faithfully serve you in this office to the glory of your name and the building up of your church through the merits of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, world without end. Amen. Take my feet. Take Take my voice First Timothy chapter 3 verses 8 through 13. Deacons likewise must be serious, not double-tongued, not indulging in much wine, not greedy for money. They must hold fast in the mystery of the faith with a clear conscience and let them first be tested. Then if they prove themselves blameless, let them serve as deacons. Women likewise must be serious, not slanders, not temperance faithful in all things. Let deacons be married only once and let them manage their children and their households well. For those who serve well as deacons gain a good standing for themselves and a great boldness in the faith that is in Jesus Christ. Take my lips.
chapter 10, verses 1 through 16. Verily, truly, I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way, is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leaves them out. When he has brought them out, all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, Verily, truly, I tell you, I am the gate of the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and out and go and find pastures. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. At verse 12 it says, the hired hand who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and run away. And the wolf scatters them and scatters them, snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me. Just as the Father knows me, I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that, are, that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. Glory be to the Father. those ordinands for elder orders if you would retire and that the candidate for diaconate ordination please come and stand in the center aisle. Now so that this congregation knows your heart, you will now take vows, promises to God, not just between human beings. This is the vow that you make with heaven. Do you trust that you are inwardly moved by the Holy Spirit to take on the office of the ministry in the Church of Christ to serve God for the promotion of his glory and the edifying of his people? Do you, without question, believe all the scriptures contained in the sacred canon consisting of the 39 books of the Old and 27 of the New Testament? I do believe. 
Will you sincerely read and explain the same to the people whom you shall be appointed to serve? The office of a deacon is to assist the elder in divine service, and especially when the elder administers the Holy Communion, to help the elder in the distribution thereof, and to read and explain the Holy Scriptures, to instruct the youth, and in the absence of the elder, to baptize. Furthermore, it is the deacon's office to search for the sick, the poor, the powerless, that they may be visited and help. Will you do this gladly and willingly? I will do so by the help of God. Will you frame and order your own life and the lives of your family according to the doctrine of Christ and to make both yourself and them as much as in you lies wholesome examples to the flock of Christ? I will do so, the Lord be my help. Will you be governed? by the discipline, doctrine of the African Methodist Episcopal Church in which you are being ordained, and will you reverently obey them to whom the charge and government over you is committed, following with a glad mind and their godly judgment? I will endeavor to do so, the Lord being my help. Yeah. Say your name. Mark Anthony Peters, take authority to execute the office of a deacon in the Church of God, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let the church say amen. Take authority to read the scriptures and to preach the same in the Church of God. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, let the church say amen. amen. Please stand, congregation. Read. <coughs> Scripture from Luke, the, second, the 12th chapter, verses 35 through 38. Be dressed, ready for service, and have your lamp shining. Be like the servants who was waiting for their master to come home from a wedding party. When he came and knocked, the servants immediately opened the door for him. They were blessed when their master came home because he sees that they were watching for him. I tell you the truth, the master will dress himself to serve and tell the servants to sit at the table and he will serve them. Those servants will be happy when he comes in and find them still waiting, even at midnight or after. The word of God for the people of God. Brother Mark Anthony Peters, rise now as the Reverend Mark Anthony Peters. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Come on, praise God. The Lord is good. Turn around and face the people who are praying for you. You may be seated. Three local candidates and one ordinan for itinerant elder orders. Please come.
My brothers and my sisters, you have heard as well in your private examination as in the exhortation which has been made to you and in the writing of the apostles of what dignity and of how great importance this office is to which you are now called. And now again we exhort you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ that you have in remembrance of how high a dignity and how weighty an office you are called. That is to say to be messengers, watchers, stewards of the Lord, to teach. So again, to teach and to admonish and provide for the Lord's family, to seek for Christ's sheep that are dispersed abroad and for his children who are in the midst of this evil world, that they may be saved through Christ forever. Have always therefore printed in your remembrance how great treasure is committed to your charge, for they are the sheep of Christ, which he bought with his death and for whom he shed his blood. The church and congregation whom you must serve are his spouse and his body. And if it should happen, the same church or any members of it do take any hurt or hindrance by reason of your negligence. You know the greatness of the fault and also the horrible punishment that will follow. Have mercy upon us, Lord. Wherefore, consider within yourselves the end of the ministry towards the spouse and body of Christ, and see that you never cease from your labor, your care and diligence, until you have done all that lies in you according to your bounden duty, to bring all to the committed to your charge, to the agreement in the faith, and to the ripeness and perfectness of age in Christ, that, the, that there may be no place left among you, either for error in religion or viciousness in life. And now that this present congregation of Christ, here assembled, may also understand your mind and wills in these things, and that this your promise, your vow, may more move you to do your duties, you shall answer plainly to these things, which we in the name of God and his church shall demand of you concerning the same. Are you ready? Do you think in your heart that you are truly called according to the will of our Lord Jesus Christ to the order of elder? We need to hear you. Are you persuaded that the Holy Scriptures contain sufficiently all doctrines required of necessity for eternal salvation through faith in Jesus Christ? Are you determined out of the said scriptures to instruct the people committed to your charge and to teach nothing as required of necessity to salvation, but that which you shall be persuaded may be conducted and proved by the scriptures? Will you then give your faithful diligence always so to minister the doctrine and sacraments and discipline of Christ as the Lord hath commanded? Will you be ready with all faithful diligence always to banish and drive away erroneous and strange doctrines contrary to God's word and to use both the public and private monitions and exhortations as well to the sick as to the whole within your charge as need shall require and occasion shall be given. Will you be diligent in prayer in the reading of the Holy Scriptures and in such studies as help to the knowledge of the same, laying aside the study of the world and the flesh? Will you be diligent to frame and fashion yourselves and your families according to the doctrine of Christ and to make both yourselves and them as much as in you lies wholesome examples and patterns to the flock of Christ? Will you maintain and set forth as much lies in you sweetness 
and peace and love among all Christian people and especially among those that are or shall be committed to your charge. Will you reverently obey your chief ministers unto whom is committed the charge and government over you following with a glad mind and will their godly admonitions submitting yourselves to their godly judgment. Let me ask if you would step to the fur farthest. Physically distance, go all the way to the end of the row, please. Let me ask you to go all the way to the end of the row and we will do you first. Seven elders. The Lord pour upon you the Holy Spirit for the office of work of an elder in the church of God, now committed to you by the imposition of our hands, and be a faithful dispenser of the word of God and of the holy sacrament in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Let the church say amen. amen. Put your hands on the Bible, both hands please. Take thou authority to preach the word of God and to administer the holy sacraments in the congregation. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, let the church say amen. amen. Rise, local elder, turn around, and allow the people to celebrate this new move in the ordained ministry. <laughs> amen, you may retire to Next candidate. Seven the Lord, the Lord pour upon you the Holy Spirit for the office and work of an elder in the church of God, now committed to you by the imposition of our hands. And be thou a faithful dispenser of the word of God and of his holy sacraments. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, let the church say amen. Place both hands on the, on the Bible, please. Take thou authority to preach the word of God and to administer the holy sacraments in the congregation. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, let the church say amen. Rise. Local elder, turn around. Let the congregation praise God for Reverend Tommy Telford. The Lord, turn your face. The Lord, pour upon you the Holy Spirit for the office and work of an elder in the church of God, now committed to you by the imposition of our hands, and be thou a faithful dispenser of the word of God and of the holy sacraments. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, let the church say amen.
Take thou authority to preach the word of God and to administer the holy sacraments in the congregation. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, let the church say amen. amen. Rise now, local elder, turn around and let the congregation praise God for the Reverend Cynthia Rogers. The Lord pour upon you the Holy Spirit for the office and work of an elder in the church of God now committed by the imposition of our hands and be thou a faithful dispenser of the word of God and of his holy sacraments in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Let the church say amen. amen. Take thou authority to preach the word of God and to administer the holy sacraments in the congregation. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, let the church say amen. amen. Rise now, Reverend Lamel Taylor, itinerant elder. Reverend Andrew and Reverend Russ, please read. Almighty God, giver of all good things, who by your Holy Spirit has appointed diverse orders of ministers in your church, mercifully look at these, your servants, now called to the office of elder, and replenish them with intimacy of life, that by both word and good example, they may faithfully serve you in this office to the glory of your name and the building up of your church through the merits of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, world without end. Amen. Amen. Most merciful Father, we beseech you to send on these your servants your heavenly blessing they may be clothed with righteousness, and that the work, words spoken by their mouths may never be spoken in vain. Grant also that we may have grace to hear and receive what they shall deliver out of your most holy word, or agreeably to the same as the means of salvation, and that in all our words and deeds may seek the glory and the increase of your kingdom through Jesus Christ our Lord. I know it was the blood, I know it was the blood, I know it was the blood for me. across he hung his head and died he hung his head and died for me one day one day when I was wrong he, he died upon the cross and I know I know I know it was I know 
of the communion have already been consecrated. Now let us say the general confession together. Almighty God, Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge in the way our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed, by thought, word, and deed against your divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily solved for these our misdemeanors. The members of them as grievous unto us. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us. Most merciful Father, we are Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, say, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may hereafter serve and please you in newness of life. We honor and glory your name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let me ask the stewardesses if you would just stand forward so that we can move. Thank you for your contribution. You are open. On the night that he was betrayed, he took bread. When he'd given thanks, he said, take and eat. This is my broken body, broken for you. Take and eat. Say the Lord's Prayer together, beloved. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, the power, forever. Oh Lord, I thank you, thank you. Th yes, Lord, I thank you, thank you, thank you. I just Oh Lord, I thank you. Lord, I Oh Lord, I thank you. Oh Lord, I thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. 
Yes, Lord. Thank you. Yes, Lord, I thank you all the days of my life. Direct us, O oh Lord, in all of our doings with your most gracious favor and further us with your continual help that in all of our works begun, continued, and ended in you, we may glorify your holy name, our Lord Jesus Christ, and the peace of God, which passes understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessings of God, Almighty the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Together we say amen. What a mighty God we serve. worship experience. I come before you today to present our preacher. What can I say about our preacher this morning? Other than that she has had a ministry that has spanned the last 40 years, beginning in Baltimore, Maryland. She has served as our 117th elected and consecrated bishop of the African Methodist Episcopal Church for the last 21 years. What can I say about our preacher this morning? She is the first woman elected and consecrated bishop of the AME Church. What can I say about our preacher this morning? She is our own bishop, presiding prelate of the 10th Episcopal District. What can I say? about our preacher this morning. Well, if you tell the story once she leaves, I want to, you to remember to tell the story that she was a great leader here in the 10th District. When you tell the story, I want you to tell them that she operated in character. When you tell the story about how she was as our leader here in the 10th District, I want you to remind people that she is a preaching woman. That is not in the past tense, she is a preaching woman of God. And so after the selection of our choir this morning, we will hear from none other than the Right Reverend Bishop Vashti Murphy McKenzie. When she comes to the podium, please stand. Thank you. 
this morning that you allow us to be alive in this sanctuary. We thank you for the grace that shows up amazingly. And we thank you for unexpected blessings. Thank you, Lord, for walking us through these seasons. And for those who have been set aside for the gospel ministry, we praise God. You are still calling. And they're still answering. Hallelujah. Now, God, say what you got to say and do what you want to do. And our prayer consistently has been, save somebody, Lord. Heal somebody, Lord. Deliver somebody who is bound. And this we ask in Jesus' name. It's all right to say amen. Please be seated. Amen again. Supervisor Mackenzie, God bless you, my partner in life and ministry. We have... Uh, yes, it's been 40 years, and neither one of us is over 42, and so um, it was really interesting when we were children, but nevertheless, we have journeyed this way quite a while, and we have journeyed together, and it has been a sweet journey, praise the Lord. To our presiding elders, God bless you, and those of you who have led us in worship, praise the Lord for you. To these ordinands and their families and those who have come to be witnesses of the laying on of hands. Uh, to Smith Chapel, who is our host church, and uh, the ushers and all of those, the choir, uh, who have shared with us. Pastors, presiding elders, preachers, lay members, missionaries, YPD. To our home team, I want the home team to stand. It, those are the folk that, that staff, and they may be scattered everywhere, but y'all stand up so we can praise God for you. Home team, home team. Hey, home team. Amen. Uh, and I want to praise God for our tech crew, half of them up in the balcony because they're working. Amen. And we wave up to you. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, to the tech crew uh, that have been working now for a year and a half and bringing miracles so that we could see and have worship even in a virtual context. Uh, to our oldest grandchild, Gracie, who is holding down the balcony today. Amen, praise the Lord. Holding down the balcony. It's amazing how all kids just want to sit in the balcony. I don't know what it is. And if I ask you to raise your hand, you'd be able to tell me, yeah, you sat in the balcony too one day. There is a word from the Lord. Amen. All week long I have been saying thank you. Thank you for the legacy celebrations. Thank you for uh, blessing my husband and I, and thank you for allowing us to be co-laborers with you in the state of Texas. Amen, in the state of Texas. So now let's come to the word of God, and it comes from the Old Testament today, Isaiah chapter 6, verses 1 through 9. Isaiah chapter 6, verses 1 through 9. But I'm just going to lift two of, those, two of those verses. The first one is verse 5. And I'm reading in a New International Version. Woe to me, I cried. I am ruined. 
for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. And my eyes have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. And then verse 8. Also, I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? Then I said, Here am I, send me. And our theme and thought of meditation is the tension between O oh Lord and well. The tension between O oh Lord and well. You are cordially invited to become a new creature in Christ Jesus, forgetting what is behind and strain forward to the new you. You are cordially invited to examine the past and decide what you need to let go and what you need to keep. To be patient with yourself when you want things to be over, when you want things to end, so you can land not where you want to land, but land where God wants you to land. You are cordially invited to do something of significance that makes families and communities, neighborhoods, organizations, and auxiliaries better places to work and to live in, to do something with your call, to do something with your ordination, selflessly to make a place better than you found. There's an invitation on the table. You are cordially invited to surrender life on your own terms so you can accept Christ on his terms. Oh, you're cordially invited to sacrifice, yes, an invitation of sacrifice, to sacrifice some passions and sacrifice some desires and sacrifice some attitudes and sacrifice some wants and needs and sacrifice your time and your treasure, putting everything into the hands of the Savior for his glory and not your own. All the credit check marks are on the Lord's side of the ledger. That will be done. I said you're cordially invited. Do you hear the invitation? You are cordially invited to have your heart broken by the tragedies of this world. Ordinance, are you listening to what I just said? You're cordially invited to have your heart broken by the tragedies of this world. And preach through your own heartbreaking moments. Even when you are physically drained, emotionally exhausted, even when you have given all you can give and there's no more to give. You are cordially invited. There's an invitation on the table to receive divine energy so you can walk and not grow weary and run and not faint. An invitation to be strong in the Lord because his yoke is easy and his burdens are light. I said there's an invitation on the table. You are cordially invited to exchange your weakness for the Lord's strength, uh, your weariness for the power of the Lord, uh, your ideas for his vision, uh, your plans uh, for the plans he has for you, plans not to harm, uh, but to prosper you, to give you a future and a hope. You are cordially invited to make bricks without straw, uh, to make the impossible look easy, uh, to stretch uh, every offering to meet every need. Uh, you are cordially invited uh, to love hard folk into loving you back, uh, to raise the budget uh, and turn around and raise it again, uh, and then raise the roof uh, with Holy Ghost preaching and high praise. Uh, I said there's an invitation going around. Have you received it yet? You are cordially invited. <laughs> You are cordially invited to go ye into the world where you are assigned to go to feed the hungry and clothe the naked and seek out and save the lost and cheer the fallen and carry the cross of Christ because Christ hung on the cross for us. You, beloved of God, are cordially invited to stop believing that the Lord wants to send you to safe space and start believing that God wants to send you to places that are hard. Mm -hmm. Cordially invited to go to hard places and not easy places. 
you're cordially invited to go to congregations with problems because all congregations have problems. You're cordially invited to go and minister to people with needs because all people have, have needs. You, you, you are cordially invited to go to buildings that need fixing because every building needs a fixing. You're cordially invited to go to neighborhoods in pain because there are very few neighborhoods that don't have pain. You're cordially invited to go to neighborhoods with disruptive distractions, like what? Like poverty and homelessness and drugs and human trafficking and unreliable food and water. You are cordially invited. Jesus Christ didn't die to keep us safe from hurt, harm, and danger. Uh, Jesus died to make us dangerous. Yes, he did. Uh, and how dangerous uh, uh, are you? Uh, well, we are so dangerous that we can bind and loose, uh, bound on earth. Uh, uh -huh, and it's going to be bound in heaven, and we can loose uh, on earth, and it'll be loose uh, in heaven. We, uh -huh, Jesus died not to keep us safe from harm and, and danger, but, but, but died so that we would be dangerous. How dangerous that we can declare and decree uh, the word of God. How how dangerous are we? Uh, we can bleed the blood, uh, cast out devils, uh, send for elders to pray when somebody's sick. Uh, how dangerous are we? Uh, uh, every single morning from your knees, uh, you have the power of prayer uh, in your spiritual arsenal uh, to shake up hell uh, and storm the gates of hell uh, and send hell back to hell uh, and scare the living hell out of hell and that's just from your knees that's just that's just from your knees and when you get off your knees life and death is in your mouth so speak life when you get off your knees you are invited to engage in life transformation and character correct Thing, and resource identifier uh, to co-create and create with Christ uh, in a ministry that breaks up the darkness of this world and ushers people into the marvelous light of Jesus Christ. You are cordially invited. There's an invitation on the table. Uh, you are cordially invited to do what our 10th Episcopal District theme says, to start out strong. For God's sake, if you're going to start something, uh, don't come in wimpy and weak knee. Uh, but start with strength uh, and then when you get there then stay as strong as the Lord helps you to stay strong and when it's over in, 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 in strong uh, you are cordially invited uh, to refuse to be intimidated or ashamed uh, of what the Lord does for you uh, and through you uh, uh, not intimidated or ashamed of the blessings that God gives you, or the chances that God gives you, or the door that the Lord opens for you, or the prayers that are answered because you prayed a prayer. There's an invitation on the table. You're cordially invited not to be intimidated or ashamed. <sighs> to shrink back your intellect to help make somebody smarter. You being small has never made anybody big. Ah, you're cordially invited not to be intimidated or ashamed of the anointing of Jesus Christ. The anointing that is poured upon you, but don't covet somebody else's anointing and don't covet anybody else's gift. Ah, don't be ashamed of the ain't fair favor because favor still ain't fair. Or the prayer that was answered because you had the nerve to pray it and the doors that God opened for you and the mistakes that you made and God made, forgave you of your mistakes. Or the miracles that you dared to believe in a sea of naysayers are the ones that say it ain't gonna happen. But you dared to believe anyhow. There's an invitation on the table. Did you hear it yet? You're cordially invited. You're cordially invited to hold your head up when resentment surrounds you because you know that promotion is of the Lord. If you humble yourself before the Lord, Jesus will lift you up. For he says, if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all humans 
unto me. You are cordially invited to bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in your mouth. Bless the Lord when things are going right and bless the Lord when it ain't. Bless the Lord in the midst of mean spirited and jealous attitudes for no petty formed against you shall prosper. There's an invitation on the table. You are cordially invited to preach the word in season and out of season as Paul charged young Timothy. So now I charge you, ordinance. <sighs> Invite you now to preach with confidence, to convince, to rebuke, endurance, long-suffering, to teach, and at the same time walk worthy of your call. The invitation matters. Yes, it does. The invitation matters. Because the invitation never comes to the same person the same way. The invitation comes differently to each and every one of us, but the invitation does come. To Paul, it was a public invitation on a road with other people around him. And the invitation was going up, but he was the only one that heard what had not been spoken, and he was the only one that saw what had not been revealed. And isn't that just like Jesus for for the Lord is always showing us what has yet to be revealed and, and he's always telling us what has not been spoken out loud. That's why we get in trouble because we try to tell people who hadn't heard and show people who hadn't seen. Isn't that just like Jesus? And Paul's inv invitation didn't arrive in isolation while he had nothing else to do. He was busy, he was going somewhere, and suddenly the trajectory of his life changed forever. And I dare say, for all of us, we were all going somewhere. Come on, preachers, we were all going somewhere. We all had something to do, amen? We had our cute little pretty plans of our five and 10 and 15 year plans. It went a cute, lovely, looked so very nice until the Lord spoke up and everything changed. There was no compelling conversation in Genesis 12. God commanded and then Abraham just obeyed. And then for Samuel, Samuel was a little kid in the temple, uh, and he kept getting wake, being wakened in the middle of the night by a voice that was discomforting. And sometimes when God calls us, we hear that voice, it, it's discomforting, because then we realize something getting ready to happen, and we may not necessarily know what it's all about. But thank God there was an elder in the house. There was an elder in the house. There was an older person who had hung around the Lord, hung around holy places long enough to be able to say, boy, just go back and lay down. And when you hear that voice again, say, speak, Lord, your servants is listening. But Moses' call did not come in the early morning years of his life. It came late in life. He was a second career prophet. Yes, he was, that demonstrated hesitancy and excuses. Come on, y'all know what I'm talking about. You know, Lord, I can't do this because. You know, I don't have this because. You know, I won't have enough my cause. I don't have enough education cause. I don't have, I don't have, I don't have, I don't have. And his invitation was issued from a bush that burned but could not consume. In each of these calls, God initiates the conversation. Wait. In each of these calls, it is God who initiates the conversation. There is an attention getter. Somebody's going to have to cut the air on this side. Amen. Cut the air. Every time I take a deep breath, I'm taking in the whole air conditioning system. Amen. <laughs> in each of these calls, God initiates the conversation. There is an attention getter, a bush that says, come here, uh, an emergency that says you need to listen, a, a flash of light that helps you to see, an event that makes you drop your water pots and run back among hateful people and tell them I've seen a man who told me everything about myself. There is an attention getter. Uh, how God calls and God sends. Uh, Abraham, go where I send you. Samuel, get up and listen. Uh, Moses, go tell Pharaoh. Paul, go to the Gentiles. Ezekiel, go to the valley of dry bones. With every call, there is a sending. Are you paying attention to me yet? In every call, there is a sending. Uh, and the sending may not be cute. It may not be pretty. It may not be big. It may not have a high steeple. It may not have a manicured lawn and a wealthy zip code. But with the call, there is a sending. Uh, and wherever the call sends you, amen, uh, trust that you have exactly uh, what the people need uh, where you're going to go. Abraham, Moses, Samuel, Ezekiel were not sent to safe and sane places. Let me back up and say that again. Abraham, Moses, Samuel, and Ezekiel were not sent to safe and sane places. Uh, they were sent into the face of 
danger, where their faith would be challenged. Has yours been challenged yet? <laughs> uh, where their gifts uh, would be developed. Has your gifts been developed yet? Uh, where they would be stretched to do what they had never done before. Uh, beloved, a ship is built to sail. Uh, the plane is engineered to fly. Uh, the car uh, is built for the road. Uh, and it just, uh, I just don't understand uh, where preachers get the idea uh, that they were built and called to places uh, where there would be no arguments, uh, no difference of opinion, uh, no issues, uh, no upset. Uh, uh, that somehow in the call, the sending is to flowery beds of ease. Uh, must Jesus bear the cross alone and all the world go free? Uh, this is uh, an invitation. Uh, as one scholar puts it, uh, it's like being invited to a land uh, where a river runs through it, uh, where the called out ones are impregnated by the river of life, uh, that they can draw life from the river uh, and the wonderful fullness of the river, uh, even if there's death and danger all around, uh, because they're in the land of the river. Uh -huh, uh, there is life wherever they go. Uh, I got a river of life uh, flowing out of me. Uh, make the lame to walk and the blind to see. Uh, the invitation is to participate. Uh, in a relationship that doesn't dissolve the prophet's self of sense uh, or is a one-way absorption uh, into the transcendency of God uh, but reminds me of the words of Jesus, uh, I will be with you always. Uh, even to the ends of the earth. Like the words of comfort spoken to Moses, I shall be with you. In other words, this invitation, you are cordially invited to never be alone. No matter where you are, no matter where you go, you are never alone. When you stand to preach, somebody's up here with you. When you're on your knees to pray, you are not praying all by yourself. Ah, it is an invitation to never be alone. Mama or daddy may forsake you, but the Lord shall take you up. So come on, come on. Come on here, Isaiah chapter 6. You know what it says. What? In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord high and lifted up. And the train of the Lord, the train of his robe filled the what? The temple. And the post of the doors were shaken. And the house was filled with smoke. And then I said, woe is me, for I am undone. I dwell in the midst of the people of unclean lips. Then one of the seraphim flew and took a coal from the altar with the tongs of the altar and put it on my mouth and said, Behold, <laughs> your iniquities have been uploaded and taken away, and your sins are purged. Then the prophet says, Also I heard a voice that said, What, whom shall I send? Who will go for us? Here I am, Lord, send me. Understand that there was trouble in the land and Israel had become too complacent in its own security to hear or heed the warnings of heaven. Now, they've gotten so comfortable in a corrupt world, in their prosperity, that they thought that they could escape the wrath of God. Uzziah was a good king, yes he was, for 52 years. Yet in his latter days, he became arrogant and profaned the temple. All of Israel was shaken and needed to be shaken by the vision of the Lord, high and lifted up. For the vision announced uh, that it was not the king who was sovereign, uh, but God is sovereign. Uh, there is not the sovereignty of humankind. Uh, so what the vision is trying to say that kings uh, compete, but they will fail. Uh, people will worship idols, uh, but their false gods will crumble. Uh, people refuse to trust God. Uh, and then a pagan was sent to be an instrument of judgment. Uh, yet, uh, and I love yet, uh, yet the sovereign Lord promises uh, to preserve a remnant through whom a savior will come uh, and set up an ultimate reign. Uh, uh -huh, when swords uh, are beaten into plowshares uh, and the lion uh, will lay down uh, with the lamb. Uh, Isaiah leaves no shadows or no doubt uh, that this is God who is writing the script uh, of human history. Uh, you are cordially invited uh, to be on the same page uh, with God. Uh, uh, but what brings us to the text uh, is the tension between these two verses, uh, 
verse number five and verse number eight. Uh-huh. Well, two verses. Uh, because no matter how great today is, preacher, uh, how great the laying on the hands, uh, preacher, uh, how great the setting aside of the called out is, uh, how great the wisdom, power, or divine, uh, how great is to take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to me. Uh, this here is the big deal. Uh, what are you going to do tomorrow after your ordination? What are you going to do next week in your ordained ministry? Yeah. What are you going to do next year uh-huh, in your ordained ministry? Yeah. What you going to bring uh, to the annual conference uh, in your ordained ministry? Yeah. What you going to do five years from now, 25 years from now, 40 years from now? What will you do with your ordination? Oh, that's all right. I'm coming back to get you in just a moment. I do not know what those after, tomorrow after you ordain, and neither do you. You have no idea what the ministry will demand from you or give to you. None of us do. But I can tell you this, it will demand more than you know how to give. And it will take you places you have never dreamed you'd go. And it will give you exactly what you need, but it won't necessarily give you what you want. There is a lot that emerge, that emerges from the first nine verses in Isaiah. Listen, and there's a tension between two realities, verse 5 and verse 8, that describes the gospel ministry. There is the woe to me, I cried, I am ruined, oh Lord. And then there is the here I am, send me well. I may not, mm, the one you are expecting, but here it is. It's not the verse you may be expecting, but here it is. Woe is me, I cried, I ruined. Oh, Lord, those were Isaiah's words when he saw the Holy One, the Sovereign Lord, Holy, Holy Lord God Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. When he saw the Holy, he looked within himself. And when he looked in himself, the doorpost of his life was shaken. And the threshold of his life was shaken. And he said, woe to me. That's the old Lord. And there will come a time, preacher, when the woe is me will escape your lips. It'll either come through clenched teeth or slip out in a whisper of prayer. When you see yourself, really see yourself. They will be your words too. Every time you preach someone, will be sitting in the congregation uh, who is struggling with a life situation uh, and they are hanging on every word that is coming out of your mouth uh, and they need a good word from you uh, and you're not sure whether the word coming out of your mouth uh, is good or not. Uh, oh Lord, uh, woe is me. Uh, when you look in the mirror uh, and know that you know things about yourself uh, that you are not uh, and you are hoping people don't find out uh, that's when you said woe is me <laughs> oh lord when the church leaves you disillusioned uh, and people disappoint you uh, or your feelings get hurt uh, that's when you say oh lord uh, woe is me uh, when at night uh, you crawl into bed uh, exhausted, uh, second guessing yourself, uh, regretting a bad decision, uh, or recalling uh, what you did, uh, or what you left undone. Uh, that's the woe is me, <laughs> oh Lord, uh, on those days uh, when you are no longer sure what you believe. Uh, oh Lord, <laughs> woe is me. Uh, when you begin to wonder uh, if you are enough for this work. Uh, oh Lord, uh, woe is me. Uh, when there is a disagreement, uh, a conflict, uh, and you would just like to run away. Uh, 
oh Lord, woe is me when it's Sunday and it's time to go to church. You are one of the ones that don't feel like coming. Oh Lord, woe is me. Some days when you're feeling lost and overwhelmed, that's a, oh Lord, woe is me. When there are situations uh, when you don't know what to do uh, and you have tried everything that you know to do, uh, that is an oh Lord, uh, woe is me. Uh, when you are asked to give uh, what you don't have to give, uh, that's an oh Lord, uh, woe is me. Uh, on the days uh, you discover uh, and face things about yourself, uh, that you don't feel like facing. That's an oh Lord, woe is me. And here you are, a newly minted deacon. You a freshly minted elder. The ink is barely dry on your ordination certificate. Here you are, standing in front of all these this here people, making your vows to the Lord, saying, yes, I will. I'll commit to the ministry. Yes, I will. I'll be obedient. Yes, I will. I'll be diligent in reading and studying the Word of God. Yes, I will. I honor the sacraments. Yes, I will. I pattern the life of my family after Christ. And then you hit a bump in the ministry road. It's a oh Lord. Woe is me. After you answer, the Lord being my helper, then go ahead and advance and add, oh Lord, woe is me. Now, now beloveds, let's work on how we hear those words. The woe to me I'm ruined, oh Lord. They are not all oh, what you think they are. They're not doom and they're not just gloom. They're not about inadequacies or deficiency in you or anybody else. And they're not all about failure and they're not all about giving up. They are the words mm -hmm, that this almost brand new prophet, Isaiah, he said it to open his heart to God. Whoa, oh Lord, uh, words of self-reckoning. It's a recognition, recognition of his accountability and responsibility. This is take my heart and let it be, take my lips, take my song, take me. This old Lord moment, ever been there? When the truth comes marching in and you see yourself, ye that you are human and you have human frailties and you are not Jesus, hallelujah, and you don't have to be crucified because he has already been crucified. It is, I'm standing in the need of prayer, break every chain confession. It is the I surrender all. So when he said, oh Lord, woe is me, he, he was opening his heart to God. That's one, here's two. The second line from Isaiah is said, here am I, send me. Remember the first Lord, first line that says what? Oh Lord, woe is me. Then the second line is here am I, send me. And that's the well, that's the well line. Well, there'll be days when you touch the mystery and the mysterium and you will weep with joy uncontrollably and you cannot explain it because God has touched you in such a way that joy overflows in your heart. Well, that's the day when gratitude overtakes your very being and you say one more time, here I am, Lord, send me well. Is at the times when you were overwhelmed by the intimacy of pastoral care and the trust that people place in you and the secrets that you share, they share with you and you say, here 
here I am, Lord. Well, uh, one more time. Uh, it's the circumstances and people uh, that they will call you more deeply into your ministry. And you will say things you didn't know how to say. And you do things you never thought you could do. And so you say one more time, here I am, Lord. Well, some days uh, your heart will break for the pain of the world uh, and the hurt for your people. Uh, and God will pour a compassion on the inside of you that cannot be contained. Well, you will weep for joy at the baptism of the child. You will shout for joy when you join a couple into marriage. You will rejoice when the heart is penitent and is reconciled with the Lord. Then what you dreamed of actually comes true you'll say well here I am Lord send me when you catch a glimpse of the train of the Lord and his robe fills the entire sanctuary and the smoke of the Holy Spirit shows up and the Shekinah glory comes down you say well here am I Lord send me all over again and there's a tension between the two now we're done tell your neighbor she done now y'all ain't saying loud enough that means I'm supposed to continue on over the next 24 pages let me say that again she done now If you listen carefully, there is a tension between, oh Lord, and woe, and well, send me again. It's a paradox in these two lines. It's not one or the other, it is both and. It's at the same time. For the ordinance, this is where you're stepping in today. If you pay attention, you'll be able to live your ministry in the midst of this paradox. Because one verse is calling you to be humble and the other verse is calling you to be courageous. And one is calling you to be honest and the other is calling you to be faithful. It's a tension in the text between the old Lord and the well. And one is calling you to be authentic and the other is calling you to be obedient. And one asks you to confess, O oh Lord, and the other is asking you to profess, well, preach until the power of the Lord comes down. And in that tension between these two, you will witness the suffering of Christ and share in the glory to be revealed. You will walk through shadowed valleys and go from glory to glory. You will stumble and the Lord will lift you up. And you'll be thrown into pits and you'll walk in treacherous places on hinds feet. And you will be battle weary and at the same time you'll be battle ready. You will be human. And you'll be empowered by power divine. There is a tension in the text. And that's where we live. And if you live in between, that's where you'll find the peace. That's where you find the peace. You can hold that tension and hold those lines together in your heart without saying one to the exclusion of the other. And so here is your charge, beloved. Not just to the ordinance, but the 10th Episcopal District. As Peter says, be an example to the flock. Be an example to the flock. Be an example to the flock. Live between confession and profession. Preach the unadulterated gospel of Jesus Christ. Preach until souls are saved. Don't just recycle members from church to church. There are still people who do not know Jesus and need a place to belong. Hold the tension, 10th District, and find peace 
at the center. Acquire a peaceful spirit, writes one scholar, and around you thousands will be saved. You are cordially invited to be in relationship with the sender as one sent. You're cordially invited to be a proclaimer of the gospel, to demonstrate kingdom behavior, be faithful, <coughs> excuse me, in her calling, and reach people with the good news, and welcome them into the community of believers, whether you are related to them or not. 10th District, God has called you and now he's going to send you to do what you have never done before. He's going to send you to build and rebuild. He's going to send you to plow the field and cultivate the land. So one plants, the other waters, and God gives the increase. Don't be mad at the planter and don't be mad at the waterer. Just allow the planter to plant and the water to water it. And then watch God give you the increase. She done now. She's done all she could. She's run as fast as she could. She gave as much as she had. And when she didn't have anything to give, she went looking for someone to help her to give. She preached as much as she could and prayed all she could. Now the waterer is coming and God will still give the increase. The Lord's name be praised. Now here's our call today. Here's our call today. Somebody needs a fresh start. You're cordially invited to a fresh start. Somebody wants a do-over. You're invited to a do-over. Somebody's waiting on a prayer to be answered. Come on to the altar and ask God one more time. Somebody's hurting. God, I need you to remove the hurt. God, I'm just uncertain about what tomorrow's going to be like. I need you to help hold my fears and my doubts in check till tomorrow shows up. Lord, I'm lost. Woo. Everywhere I turn, I don't see the right turn signal. I don't see the green light. Come on, let's pray at the altar. I may not have spoken your need out loud, but you know there's something that you need. And this is where we come and ask for it. Yeah. And if you need to be saved, this is a good time to get it done. Oh, and there's one more thing. If God is calling you to preach, this is a good time to deal with it. Life and is and save, 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 save. Say, life, soul, say, 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 by his power divine, say, through new life supply. Life now is sweet and my joy. Say, 
And so um, we are closing our worship service and we're going to say goodbye to our virtual audience. And we thank you for listening and watching and thank you for praying with us today. Amen. Y'all wave goodbye. Say bye, y'all. Love you. Care about you greatly. Thank you for being around with us. And we're going into another segment.